It's another episode of the Minding My Temple podcast, and I'm your host, Tasha Temple. Today, I have a very special guest. If you guys have tuned in to the past few episodes, we've been talking all about plant-based living, vegetarian lifestyle, and vegan lifestyle. And so I thought it'd be really important to have the guest I have on today, because I think it's really important for you guys to learn a lot about living a vegan lifestyle. So why not bring aboard one of the best vegan chefs I know, Jeff Tata. Welcome. How you doing? Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's of always course, a pleasure being on here. I think, you know, like I'm always so impressed about, you know, your creations and innovations and all of that. And I just think it's really important for people to learn about vegan in a way that can be sustainable, that can be supportive, that they can figure out like what to do, especially from someone who is not only just a vegan chef, but follows a vegan lifestyle. And I think it's important for them to hear, like, you haven't been vegan your whole life, right? Like some people are like, well, how do I switch over? Like, how do I change? Like, you know, I've been doing this for so long. Like, how does that look? And how does that work? I think it's important to not only hear it from somebody who's a professional in it, but also hear like your journey in it. So I'm happy to have you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mm Mm-hmm. So tell me a little bit about, tell us a little bit about you, um, what you do, and then tell us how you got into uh, the lifestyle of vegan. Um, Okay, so I am a chef. Um, I've been a chef since 2014 professionally. Um, Getting into the lifestyle of veganism, it's been a, I'm not going to front, it's been a difficult transition for me. (laughs) It was like, because, you know, I used to be a all meat, no sides type of person. So Really? Yes. (laughs) Like Like straight up meat and that's it. Yeah, just me. (laughs) So now that when I transitioned, I transitioned into just straight plant-based because, you know, what I do now and how I eat now is a little different than vegan food. So like uh, vegan can be classified as pretty much like a junk food type of diet, but no Mm -hmm. animals, (laughs) but it does still include like soy and processed foods and stuff like that. So I don't do none of that now. Now I'm strictly alkaline vegan and that's where I don't have any soy, no GMOs, no fake foods or hybrid plants or anything like that. Everything has a pH of 7.4 and above. um, And it goes along the lines of the Dr. Savi lifestyle. So it took me at least two years to completely let go of me. To be honest. (laughs) <laughs> so did you take it was it in like a transition did you like start and first say like I'm gonna get rid of this meat and then then that meat and then like kind of yeah. move into it yes yeah. so I the hardest thing that was difficult for me to give up was beef like oh. steak was my favorite food like I could eat steak every single day <laughs> so that was the hardest thing but the first thing I let go was chicken hmm and chicken was easier than I thought it would be for me to give up only because it was my last meal of eating chicken. It was served to me raw. So oh. it, was, it was like, it grossed me out to like the 10th power. <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, no more chicken for me. And I literally cold turkey that jank. <laughs> just let it go. Like I'm done. Like you served it to me raw. Like I'm good. No more chicken. We're done. <laughs> yeah. And then I wasn't really a seafood eater anyway. Um, So that was kind of, it wasn't as difficult. The most difficult thing was the lamb and the beef for me to give that up. I was not really a dairy person or had, wasn't a dairy person. So that was easier, easy for me to give up, but it's all about just replacing these foods with different alternatives. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because people go into vegan and they think that, Oh, I have to give up flavor and, you know, mm-hmm. it's going to taste like this, but it's not like that at all. Like, as you know, I can cook my butt off. So it's yes, like, yes. It's really like I'm eating the same thing just without the animal products. So it's, it's, yeah. To your point, like you said earlier, there's a difference between, like you said, plant-based alkaline and vegan, because a lot of people that are following vegan lifestyles are having a lot of meats and or foods or alternative meats yeah. that are, just as bad as like, 
mm-hmm. yeah, I can't identify what it is. And I, you know, I, yeah. I did mention in the episode about vegan, like if you don't understand or can't pronounce it, don't know, <laughs> pronounce it, or you don't recognize it, or you don't know what that word is on an ingredients list, it's not food. Yes, exactly. That's what I tell people also all the time. Like if you can't pronounce something in the ingredient list, then you shouldn't be eating it. Okay. No. Because everything that you eat, you should be able to pronounce. It should be easy peasy, you know? So yeah, I tell people that also all the time. And I get why people go that route. It's because they're looking for, like you said, that alternative to the meat and the flavor. Like I don't want to give up my burger. I don't want to give up my steak. I don't really want to give that up. I want to have something that's going to be as close to that as possible. So then you the get familiarity these, of it. Yeah. You get these kind of meat patties and this chicken stuff or yeah. whatever that crumbles that they have. And yeah. you think like that, okay, like I'm moving into this and they think it's healthier, right? Right. And I'm like, well, not. really, like, what is that? You're what is that you're putting damage. in your body? <laughs> it, it does the same damage as if you're eating meat. Like if you're eating mm-hmm. like white rice, it's pretty much, it's predominantly made of plastic. Um, when you break it down and actually go into the science of it. So the things that, and then like processed foods literally have cyanide in them. Like it states it on the ingredients, oh. not in that word, but the other word, whatever that chemical word is for cyanide. Mm-hmm. They, the they're one we can't to, pronounce or recognize. Yeah. <laughs> they're allowed to put traces of this in our food. So it's like, okay, you got to think about it. Like, are they trying to like depopulize the population through That's food? That's a thought. <laughs> yeah. So I just started thinking of it on a different level. Um, I would like to live. <laughs> so, so, and in order for you to even get the nutrients, um, that they talk about you can get from animal-based foods, you have to eat it while it's still alive, like animals do. So if you're not eating that animal while it's still alive, then you're not getting anything from it. And ain't nobody out here doing that. (laughs) That just sounds gross. And I think, yes. So for me, I think, and I'm going to use the word plant-based alkaline like you do. I'm not, I'm trying to stay away from vegan, right? Because again, that gets coupled with this whole junk food idea Uh of vegan. And, you know, I think it's important to talk about some of those things that people think they're missing out on, right? So there are some nutrients that are associated with eating meat-based foods or these meat alternatives like protein and calcium and vitamin D and iron. And so a lot of these things, people are like, well, where am I going to get this from? Like, I don't understand how to pair things together. Or do I now have to like start spending a whole lot of money? Like people just have no idea even where to start. Yeah. First of all, protein is a made up word. (laughs) Um, It's just the amino acids that your body is made of. Mm -hmm. And the amino acids, like, like, like I say, like the biggest animals in the jungle eat plants. Okay, yeah. so it's funny to me when people ask, oh, where are you going to get your protein from? Or where are you going to get your iron, this and the third? Well, the same place that animals get theirs from <laughs> that don't eat other animals. Um, when, we are, when we are in our mother's womb, we start off as aquatic animals. I mean, or beings or whatever you want to call us. Mm-hmm. Um, we're in the water. So it's like, you can go to your water source for your iron, like because that's sea moss has an abundance mm. of iron, burdock root, sarsaparilla, bladderwrack, like there are abundance of iron, at least 102 minerals that your body needs on a daily basis comes from sea plants. Mm. <laughs> so, but nobody thinks that like if I yes. were me and even as in my profession, right, like so excuse my naivety. Like, I don't even think I think about sea plants. Like, I'm not thinking like to go buy these plants from the sea. And I'm like, but even if I do think about it, where do I get them? What do I do? How do I cook them? How do I like, how do I ingest them? Like, how does that even work? So, okay. So with the different, like all the different herb stores that we have in our area, because we're blessed to be in Atlanta where it's in abundance, you know, Um, other places, it's a little different. So pretty much people are stuck ordering offline and then when they Mm -hmm. order offline they don't really get the product that they think they're going they're supposed supposed to get um Mm -hmm. so i understand that but because we're in atlanta we have like a plethora of herbal stores and places that sell sea moss and all the different things that you can put in your body that's good for you and 
like Health Unlimited, Seven Nanda, um, Buford Highway Farmers Market, like ah. a couple of different places that we can go to to get these things. And if not, then ordering online from just reputable places. You know, you got to do your research. I tell people all the time, like, don't just take my word for what I tell you. Dive in and research for yourself because that's all a part of self-love too. Like if you you got to be just vigilant and wanting to learn the information and Mm -hmm. obtain the right information because a lot of stuff is like surface level so you'll run into when you're researching and you'll stop right on the first page of google (laughs) yes but it doesn't stop there like you've got to dive deeper because on the first page of google if you look up milk it'll still tell you it does a body good so, <laughs> so like yeah true like you got to ask my ask yourself like who's getting searched the most and then yes. who's paying the most dollars to be at the top of the search exactly. engine and on page one <laughs> exactly exactly and you just you just got to dive a little deeper because you are we as individuals are worth more than just the first page okay yeah <laughs> So yeah. we are deeper. Uh-huh. Absolutely. So if I were to go to somewhere like, I don't know, Beaufort Farmers Market or my local farmers market, if I don't live here in Atlanta, what would be if I'm looking for some sea-based food options? What would be some of the recommendations you would say like as a beginner that I should look for? Um, kelp, kelp noodles. Um, they come raw. Oh. They are, they're not. Okay, I say raw as in you can eat them as is. Um, And they have, they are your sea vegetable in noodle form. If you want pasta or anything like that, you can get it that way. They have dulce, like the kelp powder also, just as far Uh as different food ingredients that are sea ingredients that you can get outside of herbs. Um, They have the nori sheets. That you that they make egg rolls with. <laughs> oh, okay. They extract some things out of those. They even have like the nori crumbles that you can put on top of salads and stuff. It's so many different options that you can add to your foods that you already eat <laughs> just to get in your daily mineral intake. Now, let me ask you this because I'm intrigued by this ingredient. I'm so intrigued by sea moss. Uh-huh. So what exactly is sea moss going to give me in terms of nutrients? So sea moss is going to, first of all, sea moss is good for a lot of things, but a lot of people pay a lot of attention to sea moss, but that's like this on a scale of this. <laughs> so it's like, so with sea moss, you have to mix it with other mineral, other herbs to get mm. the normal, well, the daily dose of minerals that your body needs. Um, that's why I usually mix it with burdock root, sarsaparilla, bladder rack, gold. Um, all those combined give you 102 minerals that your body needs. Sea moss by itself usually is about like 35 to 92 minerals, which is huh. a good mineral count. Um, yeah. And when when people get sea moss, they get it in a gel form. Um, and you, you got to watch a lot of YouTube videos to do that. <laughs> but they'll walk you through it. Like there's so many videos out on how to make sea moss. They got so many different ways to do it. Um, the gel for me or the powder is the best form uh, for me to be able to take. Because with the powder, you can just mix it with other dry herbs. You can make capsules mm. out of it. Um, with the gel, you can put that into your smoothies or every single thing that you eat. Like at the restaurant, I put sea moss gel in every single thing that I make here. Every single thing. There's nothing that doesn't go without sea moss gel. And it's packed with 108 minerals that your body needs. Every single thing in here. So it's like if whatever, whatever you eat from here, it's, you're getting your daily amount. But so when you say eat from here, where are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> from where? <laughs> from Alkaline Vegan Food Swings, as well as Alkaline Culture, to have two restaurant locations in this building. Um, and then we're at 777 Oak Street Southwest, <laughs> Atlanta, Georgia. In Atlanta. In <laughs> yes. So, yeah, um, it's in everything, but you can take it so many different ways and just take it about a spoonful. You're good. <laughs> you know, nice. like it replenishes it rebuilds it cleanses um toxins mucus acidic um properties out of your body Hmm. 
I feel like I need that now. You do. Everybody does. I do. I need it. Like I've been on this, I've been on this health kick. It's interesting. They were talking about vegan. I, I first, I don't know if I can give up chicken. I'm just going to be honest. I don't know if I can do it. Um, I, I do not eat. It's a mental pork. thing. I know. I don't eat pork or beef and I haven't eaten those in like 20 years. I don't miss them at all. Uh And I do love a good chicken wing. I will be honest about that. And I do love some fish. I don't Uh eat like it really any other seafood. I don't really like uh, uh, seafood in a shell. Shellfish, Um, okay. Yeah, but there's a lot of foods that would be considered vegan that I have a hard time digesting. And so as I've gotten older in Mm -hmm. my over 40 years, I have a hard time digesting raw vegetables and beans. What type of raw vegetables are you trying to ingest and digest? Any of them. So like um, I stopped eating any vegetable raw in general. So like even okay. if I have kale, I'll saute it. If I have well, spinach, you know, kale, I'll saute it. Kale is one of those things that takes just as long as meat to break down in your body. Ah. Um, if, it's not, if it's not like broken down like and cooked, it's going to take just as long as beef. Yeah, so I started cooking that one. I really like peppers. Um, I cook those though. I really enjoy cabbage. Okay. But I cook that and I yes. enjoy collard greens. I cook those, but I like, I think some of the salads I can't do. I cannot no. do salad anymore. No. Like what type and of I don't know. greens are you eating with the salad? I don't know. So I think the last you time I had a salad, like- I think it was. I'm sorry, go ahead. I think it was like cabbage, kale, lettuce, mix. And I like sometimes cucumbers I have a hard time with. Maybe it's the skin on the outside. I don't know. Yeah, you know, like cucumber my... is a melon. You're not supposed to eat the skin. That's probably It's like you me. wouldn't eat the skin on a watermelon. You shouldn't eat the skin on a cucumber either. Look at that. We're about to start taking the skin off. <laughs> yes. But yes, and I noticed like your... I... I'm sorry. When you do your salad... Yeah. Try to implement like dandelion greens or watercress, arugula, and Swiss chard. Those are your greens that are going to be simple, super easy to break down in your body. And I love arugula. And we <laughs> we grow Swiss chard at the garden. I've been unsuccessful growing arugula. Nice. But I have been very successful growing Swiss chard. And so we do have that growing now. So I'm a, I have tried that in the past. and it, it does work well. And like I said, I have, oh, I have bok choy. Okay. Now, um, and I have sure, um, about the breakdown content of bok choy. I don't use bok choy just because it's not alkaline, but um, oh. I'm not the breakdown content of that. I know that the ones that are easier are the ones that I named that'll break down easier in your stomach because your stomach pretty much like it, it just correlates with the genealogy of your body. So tell me about the vegetables that are alkaline. So which are the ones, like if you can name them off the top of your head, which are some of the alkaline vegetables? I know you mentioned something about it. For those of you guys don't know, alkalinity has something to do with the pH balance. Um, And 7.4 is considered alkaline. So 7.4 and above is alkaline. If you get to your numbers like six and seven, that's acidic. Um, Acidic doesn't sound like I want that in my body anyway. It don't even sound like it would be like it would feel good acid yeah. right <laughs> right um, so tell us some of those vegetables because I didn't even know that again one of the vegetables I just named um you said wasn't on the alkaline side which are the ones that are on the alkaline side so we have your chayotes which is like a oh. squash you have your <laughs> yes. I know you have your zucchini your yellow squash you have <sighs> your tomatillos um your peppers your onions um your leafy greens, the ones that I just named, Swiss chard, arugula, watercress. Uh, what about spinach? Is that fly or no? No, it, spinach okay. is slightly acidic, even though some, you know, it can pass in some, depending on where it's grown. Um, it's like a five to six okay. <laughs> on the pH okay. scale. <laughs> okay. But Swiss chard, for me, Swiss chard tastes like spinach. Yeah, it can be like, very similar. Yeah, it tastes like spinach to me. So that's like a good replacement for people that, you know, don't want to give up spinach, but want something that's kind of similar, Swiss chard is all day. <laughs> okay. So yeah, off the top of my head, those are the ones that, um, that, yeah, I pretty much go with. I use the burrow banana as like my potato. 
and my fries and stuff like that. Anything that I would ever cook with a, as a potato, I use the burrow banana because it's mm. completely alkaline and it tastes just like potatoes. Like, I want exactly. to try that. There's I'm a potato no girl too. Oh, you, and there is literally no difference in flavor. Like it doesn't taste like banana at all. <laughs> People be surprised. They be like, wait, this isn't potato? I'm like, nah, that's <laughs> a banana. That's a banana. And <laughs> yes. I mean, if you think about it, it's going to give you the same basic nutrients that you need. It's yep. going to give you the energy that you need without having the like potato and like you said, possible acidic right. properties that it may and have. And it doesn't sit heavy on your stomach as well. I'm going to try that because I've been having a hard time breaking down potatoes lately. Oh, wow. See, your body, you got to listen to your body. Your body will tell you everything. <laughs> and I'm a potato girl. Like, I love, I'll tell you what, I love a good fry. I'm going to tell you, like, I love a good French fry. I love a good roasted potato. I mean, like, the only thing I really am not a fan of is mashed potatoes, but anything potato, I'm down for. So I definitely yeah. am going to try some of that. What is it called? Bur burrow banana? Yep. The green burrow bananas. And they, um, ah. really, only, the only place that I find those in abundance quite often is Buford Highway Farmers Market. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, yeah, that's pretty much the only place that I've been able to find them. Other places don't really carry them like that. So let's go back to, I want to go back to to make sure people have a clear idea about if they wanted to try it out and start. I mean, I think realistically, kind of like, Slowly seems realistic, right? It is. Uh, or slowly. sometimes people want to do cold turkey. But again, yeah. I feel like, like you said, it took you two years to finally give up that steak and lamb. Yeah. Yeah. Realistically, it's not an overnight thing. Now, I do have like clients that do it overnight. I was I was just wasn't one of those people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, when you're just starting out, I do recommend starting out with things that you're familiar with. Because okay. it makes the transition easier. And if for some people that's like pizzas and burgers and stuff like that, and you, you know, want to get off the meat and do something better, I would say go with the things, you know, that you find in the store, but that don't have soy. Because if you put in the soy back in your in your body, it's just like putting meat in your body, you might as well eat that that burger <laughs> or, or mm -hmm. that cheese or drink that milk <laughs> because it's just as bad. Um, and being a person of color it works harder on our system than it does mm -hmm. other cultures. So I would say definitely start off with things you're familiar with, but just use different alternatives like pasta. You know, they have all the barillas and <laughs> other name pastas and stuff. Farmer's market will be your best friend. The farmer's market is your best friend when, it's com when it comes to transitioning the, your lifestyle from eating meat to plant-based because they have, spelt pasta for example which mm -hmm. is one ingredient literally one ingredient okay so. and that, yep <laughs> so it's like go for things that have the least amount of ingredients you know go for things that have ingredients that you can pronounce mm -hmm. <laughs> that'll be your best choice when you're transitioning because it's going to do the best for your body and then it's going to do the best for your mental as well mm -hmm. because it's going to make you feel like okay I can do this you know what I mean and I don't have to be ingesting all the soy or the fake meats and things like that so that's why I would say start your transition you can still eat the pastas you can still eat the burgers you can still eat the pizzas and stuff just pick the right choice of uh processed food right. <laughs> that makes sense for your body yeah like make sure you can recognize it yes yeah. I, I'm an advocate of buying foods that you can pronounce and recognize and you know at least what it is or something that has minimal ingredients because the more right. ingredients you add the more you're getting away from it being yep. a food or whatever they want to call it exactly um, I do want to ask for, from your perspective of plant-based alkaline, do you incorporate nuts and seeds or legumes and beans at all? I, I do incorporate some. So I use chickpeas. Um, oh, my favorite. That's the only legume that I use. Um, that's the only one I can digest. <laughs> that's, the, that's the real one. <laughs> the only one I can really digest is chickpeas. I don't really even use any other type. I, I mean, I, before I did, but. I'm definitely yeah. one of those people who can, who likes to make my own hummus and, um, yes, and yes. that I like to roast chickpeas in the air fryer to make them crunchy. So I, chickpeas, I'm glad you said that so I can keep my chickpeas. <laughs> yes. Um, chickpeas what about nuts and really seeds? Good. Um, 
replacement for any other legume that you deal with. Oh, like they're the best replacement. Um, so those are the only ones that I use and ingest as well. Um, I'm sorry, what was the second part of your question? Nuts and seeds. Nuts and seeds. Yes. So, yeah, so most nuts have arginine in them, okay? But I do use walnuts and I do use Brazil nuts because they are the, they're the original nuts. They're what other nuts come from. Um, I don't do any type of peanuts or anything like that. I do use sesame seeds, um, mm -hmm. basil seeds. Like those are the only, I do use hemp seeds. Uh, those are, probably, yeah, those are the only seeds that I use because those are the alkalizing seeds that we have. So uh, yeah, just those when it comes to legumes and seeds. Now we have a pecan tree at the at the garden. They've been there for years. Like this is Georgia, yeah. so there's plenty of them just everywhere. And I don't bother with them because I don't I don't have the time to open up the shell and do all that other stuff with them. But we have loads and loads and loads of those. Like, what should we do with them? Just let leave them for the squirrels. Yep, just leave them for the animals. <laughs> <laughs> like some people will do um, like pine nuts, but oh, okay. It's only because they are native to where they're from. So I would say when you're looking for a diet or I don't like to call it diet because it has yeah. the word die in it. <laughs> but when you're I looking you. to transition your lifestyle, <laughs> it's good to eat foods that are indigenous to where you're originally from. Mm -hmm. You know, so if it if it naturally grows there. In, in that land of where you originally from, and I don't mean I'm from Atlanta. <laughs> what do you mean, Tata? Say what you mean. <laughs> I mean, your your ancestral history. Yes. Where you're originally from, um, it's best to put those foods in. Like I, like I said, oh. people do pine nuts and stuff because it grows native mm -hmm. to their land. Um okay. And really, honestly, those are the best foods for you to eat. Like Asians eat foods that are native to their to their land because those are the best mm -hmm. for their genealogy. Uh, we don't tend to do that. We eat everybody's food. <laughs> That's we true. Eat Chinese food or Asian food. We eat Caribbean food. We eat everything. Food. <laughs> everybody's, everybody's food. food. And I am always like, you know, to, to the best of our ability, I do tell people like eat local. And in that, in their mind, that means like, oh yeah, let me eat Atlanta. I'm like, at least we can get right. close to where you live home today. But I get like, then there's a question about, well, what is my ancestry? Because again, for some people it could be, you know, I know for mine, mine is North America because I have some Native, Native American ancestry. Um, I do also have some African ancestry. I have some ancestry in Scotland. Like it's important for us to learn where we come from. Like you said earlier, that's a part of doing your homework and learning about your history and doing your research is to find out where is your country of origin and yes. then figuring out what are the staple foods from there, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're right, our bodies adapt to where we're from and a, a reason why we all look different, speak different, our different complexions. It's because of survival and where we're from. Right. So I do think it's important. It just helps you become your higher self. You know, yeah. it's all a part. You should, people should want to know their ancestral history anyway, because if it's dust to dust, then everything that you have in you is what your ancestors had in them. Mm -hmm. It's just been recycled and replenished and, you know, put on to your grandmother, your mother, your father, and then you. So, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it sounds to me like even though plant-based alkaline, mm -hmm. <laughs> even though it sounds like it could be restrictive from what you're saying, it sounds like it could be fun. Um, you can still get flavor. You can still get all the nutrients you want. Um you just got to make sure that you do your research and a little homework and maybe a little planning, yeah. but it can be done. And in a fun way, like I know when I see you cooking and see your little recipes and all that stuff, like it's stuff I would want to eat. I want a beignet. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, it's crazy. Like when I do make this stuff and it tastes exactly like the stuff that has animal products in it, I'd be like, 
I don't even understand why they made it that way anyway. Because yeah. literally the beignets that I make, like you just mentioned, take there's no difference in taste at all. No difference. Well, tell us where we can find because here's the thing there's also like say I'm like somebody who's I don't really want to cook my stuff I want to find somewhere where I can maybe pick up something and run it sounds like you'd be the perfect option for that you got some restaurants that they can come to I think you also have a store that they can maybe order some stuff from and so if they're looking to start now and being able to use you as a resource to either come taste your food to order something like where is the best place to find you well I am in Atlanta in the West End um where all of most of the vegan spots is, are over here they're in the western area of atlanta however i am the only alkaline vegan restaurant um and i do have two of them um alkaline cultured and alkaline vegan food swings and then i have the online grocery store as well and pretty much it's just like when you go on to the alkaline vegan grocery store um the things that you would normally find in your local grocery stores like your, say you want canned goods. I don't do canned goods, um, but I do uncanned goods, sauces and stuff like that. So I try to take out all of the metal content and stuff that people put in their bodies and just implement it in ways where you can still have this, but in a healthier way so that you're not putting all the metals and toxins in your body. Um, I make all the meats and stuff myself, like knox tails, ribs, chicken patties, burgers, <laughs> all kinds of stuff. So sausages, bacon. So you just got to get creative. You know, if you want to try to take your hand at it and make things yourself, you just got to pretty much tap into your own creativity or you can mm -hmm. shop at an online store and get it that way. And it's just a, just like your stuff you would get at the store. You pop it in the oven. It's already done. Like the Noxtail comes with gravy and everything. You just put it in the oven, cook it and sit down and eat. <laughs> so tell us your website. My website is electric food swings with a Z <laughs> dot com. <laughs> and then um, Instagram, Twitter, whatever you have on your social media handles, what do you got there? So Instagram is food swings um, and alkaline culture. There's also um, alkaline vegan grocery on Instagram. I know I have quite a few of them. <laughs> I'll put them at the bottom of the screen so they can at least write it down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and then for the um, second restaurant, the tacos, it's called alkalineculture.com. You can go on there. You can check out the menu. Um, electricfoodswings.com has the groceries as well as the restaurant uh, food on there. So you can check that out all in one space. Uh, yeah. <laughs> for those of you guys who are looking to start a lifestyle that could be plant-based or you're looking just to start to find more balance in your body and getting back to the origin of things start with chef tasa you guys she's got it already figured out for you she's got all the information or uh, now that all the information and all the food that you <laughs> need so make sure you guys support her and you know look and check and see what she has going on because again you know, on our quest to being our best selves and being out here in the world and being healthier, I'm telling you guys, she's a great resource. And so with that said, you guys, that's the Mining My Triple podcast today. If you want to know any other information about what happened on this episode, you can always catch me on Minding My Temple on Instagram. Just slip me a DM. So if you missed any information about this podcast, just send me a message and I will definitely direct her to you. So thank you guys for tuning in. Jake, thank you, Chef Tata. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. <laughs> Bye, y'all.